All right, so welcome to the lab. Um, thanks for bearing with me as I got started here. Um, so what I'd like to do here, I've got a, a folder with some example Puppet code that I'm gonna walk you through, give you a little bit of background on Puppet. Uh, how many did not attend the overview earlier today? Wait, really? Did not attend it? So wait, more than half the room. Are, are those of you that did not attend the, my overview session earlier, are you familiar with Puppet and how it works? Uh, of those, raise your hand if you know how Puppet, or if you don't know how Puppet works. Okay, all right, so bear with me everyone else. We'll go through a little bit. I'll do a speed run of, of the slides just to, uh, as a backdrop. Uh, not Windows. What happened? All right. So, so the whole idea is what we're going to do today is look at code that defines a configuration that we want to apply to these systems. And then we're going to in simulate what changes would occur. And then we're going to enforce those changes on the system. Puppet is a declarative language where you specify what state you want something to be in. It is not about procedural. So you have code that looks like this. We're going to take a look at a couple Mac specific examples in a second here. But the idea is, you specify what you want your system to look like. You don't specify actions. There are no action verbs. You don't specify a procedure to occur. You specify the state you want. Puppet ensures that that state is what is on the system. So we do this by having a puppet master in the center, which has all of the code, what we call manifests. And then we assign roles to these nodes. So the Puppet Master we have today is over an EC2, just so that it's a little bit snappier than what my VM would have provided. That's got all the Puppet code. And we also have Puppet code locally on all the lab machines. And any of you that are running non-lab machines, I can get you that code just in case EC2 doesn't work out for us or you want to apply your own code um, that hopefully we'll write. So I think this first hour is going to be about just looking over some basic examples, playing with mCollective a little bit, and then the second hour, Hopefully we can talk about other Mac problems you want to solve. You can just open it up to a discussion and hopefully write some extra puppet code that I don't have pre-canned that we can use in the lab for all your machines. All right, so that's a little bit about how this works. Any questions so far? Uh, so M Collective, you can actually get on my thumb drive, which, yeah, I have an M Collective package that I'll give you here. Where is ZDoc? Well, it'd be easier for me to just give this to you. Is it not? I don't know what machine, so let's just eject it. So for anyone else, any questions about what Puppet is? Anything I can clarify before we start going hands-on with it? Sometimes hands-on learning is the best kind of learning. All right, there is nothing super secret on here, so I'll give it to, I, I'm happy to give it to Alistair. So it's the PSU Mac folder. Mm -hmm. um, put that folder, uh, every, all the contents of that folder, put in uh, Etsy Puppet modules. Okay. And for those of you that are working individually, I'll just come around and help you individually once everybody else gets going um, so that you don't waste everyone else's time with it. Let's start with me applying some code to all the lab machines that I have mwahaha control over now. All right, so these are the certificate names on the left. When you invert this so it's a little easier to read. Is that better? Does the text need to be larger? Yes, yes, All right. And let's switch to this guy. How about that? Is that good? All right, so. Right, it's an SSL certificate. So what I've done here is run a command on my Puppet Master for listing all of my certificates. And you can see something like Macintosh 127 local is one of the machines in here, and that is its certificate name. By default, Puppet will grab a certificate name from the machine's host name. Not the FQDN, well, sometimes the FQDN, depending on how the machine particularly sets it. Max, I think it's short name, Linux, so it'll be FQDN, stuff like that. But you can always set it, and the certificate name is what Puppet uses to identify the system. So if the host name changes, this stays the same. Right? This is a certificate that you sign between the agent and master. 
what we were, Rusty and I were doing was getting Puppet deployed and getting it connected to the EC2 uh, Puppet Master, and that was signing all the certificates automatically just to take that off our, our, off our plate for right now. So let's go back to my code. This is a really kind of a hack, but I'm going to deploy TextMate on your machines in case you want to use that instead of VI for editing your code. TextMate has a built-in what's called a bundle. Does anybody use TextMate? Anybody? Okay, so you guys will benefit from me deploying TextMate to you. But TextMate has a bundle for Puppet, which has all the syntax highlighting and can pre-build uh, the syntax for you, which can be handy. So I'm going to go over to my EC2 node. Actually, let me show you the code first. So please don't read this kind of stuff as great code. It's really kind of a hack. But there's a file resource up top. And what we're saying here is this is the title I'm giving it, TextMate source. I want to ensure that it's a file. I want it to be deployed to Puppet's varder, varlib puppet textmate. So I'm just deploying this zip file down to place. I'm sourcing it, right, the authoritative source for this file is the puppet master in my PSU Mac admins module, this TextMate zip. And that's going to run before this exec that I'm referencing. Exec is another resource type in Puppet. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Puppet, these are the building blocks for everything you do. It's called a resource type. A resource type has a type, or I'm sorry, a title, which says, this is what I want to manage. And that's what gets managed on the machine. In the case of the file resource, I've split it off into two pieces how I want to reference the resource in Puppet versus what I'm actually managing with Puppet. And hopefully the reason I did that is clear. It's difficult to reference var lib Puppet TextMate 1.5, blah, 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 blah. So I'm referencing something a little simpler. And the file describes what I care to manage. So the pieces that I want to manage about this machine. And the exec is going to run a command, this unzip command, into applications TextMate. That creates parameter. So each, let me step back even further. Each of these, like command and creates, are what's called parameters. This is something that the resource type provides to you as a way of interacting with the resource. This is called the hash rocket, equal greater than. And then the value of that parameter is what you see here. So the creates property says I'm going to check the value of creates before I run this command to see whether or not I should run the command again. And right now we're just checking to see is TextMate already deployed? If it is, we won't run the command. The other side of that is the bundle. And this again, a little bit of a hack, deploying the bundle to the user library, application support, TextMate, bundles. Anybody use bundles separately or do you just use the built-in ones? I'm oh, sorry? Mostly built-in. Mostly built-in. So the Puppet one's pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and deploy it. So if I looked at that example, in this examples folder, once I show you where this is and you guys can start interacting with it, I have the manifests, which is all the code that actually does the thing, and then examples is how you declare that code and use it on a system. So I'm just gonna take this code, I'm gonna put it over on EC2, there's the Mac profile handler from earlier, which apparently is not a correct profile. So I'm going to deploy this to Mac. Is everybody logged in with Mac? I'm going to deploy the demo too, just in case. So that is me declaring I'm going to deploy TextMate, and then I'm going to deploy the Puppet bundle to both the Mac and the demo users. So ideally, what I can do now is show you how mCollective works to trigger Puppet runs among the many other things it can do. So. MCO ping is a simple command that just asks for a ping response from all the machines. It's not actually ping as you think of ping. It's dropping a message into the message bus. Um, that's right, most of you weren't at my session earlier. mCollective is the little Borg diagram that I was showing people earlier, which is, wait for it, 
these slides that I didn't write, sorry about that. There's this message queue. So the client, the Borg queen there, weirdly enough, is what's running on all of your machines. That subscribes to the message queue where the collective is dropping things into, right? So it subscribes to the message queue. The message queue is getting things dropped in it from this collective. And what I just did was drop a ping message into that message queue. All the, the machines, all the clients saw that message, read it, processed it, and put a response back into the queue for the collective to consume. That manifested itself like this. So the big advantage to M Collective here is that it's a very, very scalable transport for getting messages to all your systems. They don't all have to pull in and do a whole bunch of work. They're always having a very low resource TCP connection to the Puppet Master, consuming these messages, these kilobytes of messages in the active MQ message queue, and they're doing their work. So one of the things we can do is ping. Another thing we can do is, pup, is running Puppet. You have to forgive me as I remember the Syntax here, so I want MCO Puppet D. All right, so MCO Puppet D has a number of actions associated with it. I'm going to do that run all, where I'm going to run Puppet on all my nodes with a particular concurrency, meaning that I'm not gonna run all of them at once, even though this machine could handle it. So I'm gonna say run all, and I think I just put the concurrency after the action. All right, so all I'm doing here is saying, I want M Collective to issue a command to all of my machines to run Puppet now only 10 at a time. I'll show you how to filter hosts in a minute with M Collective. And there it goes, saying, okay, the concurrency is less than 10, so I'm gonna continue to fire off max to run Puppet. Okay, until it gets to 10, or this machine's probably gonna eat up the, the, all these clients, so it's probably not gonna get to 10. I should've put a lower number in there. But if it would've hit its concurrency limit, it would've stopped and waited until some puppet runs stopped. So M Collective is a really awesome way to take thousands of machines and run puppet against them without killing your puppet master. So I'm hoping that they're all pulling down text edit unless I failed. Let's switch over to the graphical console where I'm gonna look at the report. One of the things I was saying earlier, um, I keep thinking I'm screwing up my mic. You guys can all hear me in the back, right? Um, one of the other things on this chart was that fourth step, reporting. Every time Puppet does a simulation or an enforcement, it'll report back to the Puppet Master about what happened. All the resources that were manipulated, <laughs> what their states were, what their states are now if you were choosing to enforce. And this message is sent in a raw Ruby format and consumed by a number of report handlers. You can send it off to syslog, you can send emails, you can put it into a browser, etc. And you can write your own custom ones. I'm going to look in the browser just because. I'm just gonna refresh it here, make sure we have the latest view. It doesn't like 1024 by 768. I think this will work. So there are all my machines. They are all claiming that they ran successfully. So I'm gonna click on one of them and look at one of their reports. I don't believe TextMate actually did anything. So there's my profile manager. It's showing you that these are the resources I'm managing. And I went through this really quickly because I was looking specifically for TextMate, but this would tell you when things changed. So this is saying, I have 48 resources that didn't change. So as you start to build all your resources in, you're saying, I've got tons of classes that do all this crap. This is what's going on. So let's go see. Looks like everybody ran Puppet. What did I screw up? Did I? Did you see that before and just didn't mention it to me? Egg him. Uh, where did I miss the curly brace? Huh? No, there's demo and then colon. Up to the top, manage. Give it a curly bracket open. Yeah, and then it closes. Oh, there's the top. Okay. It's the very top. Okay, yeah, that one. Yeah, and then the node is up here and it, and it closes at the bottom. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, is, is demo, did I get the, the username wrong? What are the users on these systems? If you go into the past user searching, is it demo, the short name is demo in Mac? Yeah, yeah. but one's actually logged in with demo, so they're yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. So he, when I said this was a hack earlier, I really, really meant it. I just kind of. The short name is capital M? The short name is lowercase, right? Yeah, yeah this, is, this is all about the, the short name. So I'm going to run, and I'll show you concurrency now. I'll run it. Well, oh, you know, screw concurrency. That thing was gobbling up the machines. I need a lot more machines in order to uh, worry about it. All right. So once I get text edited along your machines, I'll let you loose on the code and we can start playing. But for now, you guys get to food coma. Do you guys get a good lunch? You're all food combing a little bit? I don't think I really ate anything, so I'm not feeling a little woozy, in fact. Go get me some lunch, Phil. <laughs> all right. What's that? Hmm. So, did anybody watch 30 Rock? 30 Rock and the Japanese porn, porn star diet? This is the eat all the paper you want? It's yeah. a bad joke, Phil. Bad joke. <laughs> I just said to eat paper. All right. So, for those of you that are running it now, it is running now. Does anybody see uh, TextMate now? Should be in, in slash applications. And you should have TextMate. The bundle should be installed. At the very least, if you have TextMate, you can get started. Uh, yeah, Etsy Puppet modules. It's uh, those are just the files you need, and to bootstrap Puppet, you're going to need to do. As soon as my Mac is done responding, I'll show you. But you would run Puppet apply against the. Uh, if you go into Puppet modules, what are you doing there? So uh, so go into Etsy Puppet modules. Give me just a second here to get my Mac going. No, no dice on the uh, TextMate? I can show you guys how to run it locally instead of doing the client server. Assuming, okay. All right, so there must have been something wrong with my declaration. So, those of you that are there, go ahead and open Terminal on your Macs. I'm gonna try to mimic this in Etsy Puppet Modules. You should have at least the PSU Mac admins folder. You probably have a lot more than me here because um, I didn't follow those proper steps. For those of you that are not using a lab computer, Alistair and I think one other, you'd want to take a look at PSU Mac admins examples demo prep, which is going to um, install M Collective and point it at the right server and so on. Yeah, actually, you know what? Don't even bother with M Collective because I just realized if you get to running this on your computer, you don't want me controlling it from EC2. So just it's a VM. okay. If if it's a VM, feel free to follow this. If it's your raw machine and you're following along, don't bother. I don't feel comfortable having having control of your machines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, just run this. It'll install M Collective and configure it. Everything else and Puppet as well. Uh, no, Puppet you'll need to install from downloadspuppetlabs.com. All right, so for everyone else, puppet agent dash T should at very least get uh, TextMate installed. I'm not sure why the M Collective broadcast of it. Guessing that uh, demo gods have already already tired of me. What's that? Cannot request cert, huh? Yeah, definitely run run everything as sudo, guys. Puppet needs to run as root in order to do its business. Um, so, so mine failed because I don't have a user named Mac. Uh, you guys do. Um, so this is this particular demo won't work out for you guys, but but everyone else, if you're doing sudo puppet agent dash t, it should be checking into EC2. It may be taking a little bit. EC2 is far away.
Uh, it might be. It's, well, no, it's U.S. West One, so it's uh, Northern California. Is it, uh, is it still loading? Did the uh, Puppet Master crash or something? All right, you're getting it. Yeah, that's cool. All right. I see blue text on some people's screens, so maybe it's just taking a little while, and uh, maybe the AT&T Wi-Fi is getting us. So for everyone else, once you have text edit or text mate, don't, please don't use text edit. <coughs> Etsy puppet modules. You'll have this, and let me get, you would have had more. Let me copy them over. Modules. Uh, let's see, OS 10 power management, you would have had, oops, sudo. And what else do you guys have in there? Like defaults, I think? That was 10 defaults. And that was, yeah, oh, and Mac Profiles Handler. All right. So does mine look like yours now? Etsy Puppet Modules. For those of you that are catching up, Etsy Puppet Modules that should have been deployed by Rusty a little bit ago. And this is the example code that we'll be working with. Any nays in the room? Still, still waiting on the text edit, text mate. I keep calling it text edit. Okay. Yeah, some of you may be going through the initial setup still. All right. It's a problem with trying to do a live demo of Puppet. All right. Oh, oh yeah, the, the bootstrap files that you have, that, that was just sort of a hack that Rusty and I put together just to deploy Puppet and everything. So don't worry about those bootstrap files. Stupid question, is EC2 required for this? No, absolutely not. No, it's the only reason, the question was, is, is EC2 required? No, it's not. Um, Puppet Master can run on Mac, it can run on Linux, and it can run on hardware or virtual. I'm choosing EC2 today because I wanted all of your machines to connect with somewhat, uh, somewhat high performance, but it turns out that my VM probably would have been better because uh, trading network connectivity at this point, network, the network is too slow. So is, everyone, is anyone still waiting on Puppet to finish? Yeah. God. All right, so what's that? Okay, so blue text is happening though. So while you wait, let's take a look at some Puppet code. So open up a new terminal, go to Etsy Puppet Modules, and let's take a look at what we have. So I want you to CD into PSU Mac admins. So I am in Etsy Puppet Modules PSU Mac admins. And so just to give you a little bit of background, what I'm calling here is modules. It's a folder that collects a bunch of Puppet code along with everything else you need to apply configuration, representing various ideas. And this is how Puppet, this is the convention by which Puppet stores everything all the Puppet code for the various things you do. This particular folder just has the code that I whipped up for, for us today. Is, this, is the text big enough for you guys in the back? Okay. So in here, we've got a couple of folders. There are a couple of files, a couple of folders. For instance, module file and metadata, that's all just crap to put it up on forge.puppetlabs.com. It's the metadata for that website. So we don't have to worry about that. Readme is pretty self-explanatory. In manifests, I have a number of files, and this is all the Puppet code. I showed you the TextMate one a minute ago, which should hopefully be applying in the background, just deploying uh, TextMate to your machines. I could have had you run it locally, and in hindsight, probably should have, and if it takes longer to deploy it, I will. But there we have manifests, which has all the code we could use. I'll take a look at that in a second. In examples, we have the declarations of some of these. So the, the difference here, in manifest, that's the code. You're describing the state you want. You're describing the resources that you want to deploy. That's a definition. In order to put it onto a machine, you have to declare it. When I switched over to EC2 and we were looking at the node default and we were matching all the braces, that's called a node declaration. And that's where you say, I want to put this class on a machine. I want to install these resources. That's just how you do it. The examples folder is just pure examples of those declarations. 
So let's take a look at, which one do I want to show you? How about Elmo? So in examples, elmo.pp, all we see in here is include PSU underscore Mac admins colon colon Elmo. We're saying we want to declare this entire class of resources. That's all it is. If I go to manifests Elmo, I ever get my class. And this is where I have a user password, user Elmo, group staff, and then users home directory for deploying a user. Unfortunately, and I have to yell at Gary about this, 10.7 requires uh, salted SHA-512 hashes for its passwords. And he wrote a function to create a SHA-512 hash, but it requires an extra module that doesn't work on Macs. So you have to be running like a Linux-based server, create your hash, and then deploy it to a, to a Mac-based client. Uh, so you can't, like, on the same machine, manage a user password unless you already have a SHA, SHA hash, a salted SHA-512 hash. Just a little bit of background there, more than you need to know. But is the relationship between the manifest code and the declarations making more sense? Doesn't look like it. All right, is anyone still waiting for Puppet to finish? Show of hands. Other than Alistair, anyone? <laughs> Not that I don't care about Alistair. Uh, so everyone else, do you have TextMate and you're ready to go? Yeah. All right, cool. So what you can do then is take a look at some of the code here and go ahead and apply it. Let's say, I think profiles already applied, didn't it? Do you guys all already have a profile installed? If you go into System Preferences, Profiles. If not, that can be something you guys can do and, and play with. Is that a yeah? Whoopsie. Oh, actually, you know what? We can remove it with Puppet. That'll be a good example. So do I have TextMate? That's a good question, Ryan. Uh, I do. Look, look, I do. Yay. All right. So I've got TextMate. I'm going to open um, Etsy Puppet Modules. I'm going to go into PSU Mac admins. I'm going to go into that examples folder, and I'm going to choose profiles for the. That's not what I wanted. Manifests. I want. Uh, sorry, I gave you the wrong file. In manifests. I want profiles.pp. The example is what we're going to run Puppet apply against, but we need to change the state that we want to manage. So in Etsy Puppet modules manifests profiles.pp, you see that we have this profile. Does, if it doesn't look like this, you'll want to change it up. I think the example I shipped was more generic. Or does it look like this? It looks like this? OK, if that's the case, if it's EDU, PSU, Active Sync, change present to absent. And I'm going to go down here and select Puppet as my, oh no, I don't have the bundle. All right, I'll fix that in a moment. For now, change present to absent, save it, and then assuming you are still in Etsy Puppet Modules, PSU, Mac admins. I'm going to apply. I'm going to give it verbose. Uh, hold on one second. Let me do a command just to make sure everything's configured right. Yes. All right. So this is going to work. Sudo puppet apply and examples profiles. All right. So the manifest, we changed present to absent. All right. Very simple change to start you guys out. Anybody else need to catch up here? So I'll try to put both of these up here. The file I edited, I'll put at the top of this. Etsy, Puppet, Modules. Is 
uh, I'm sorry to do to do the puppet apply. If you if you are already in uh, Etsy puppet modules PSU Mac admins, I'm doing a relative path. If you don't want to use a relative path, then So I'm just doing a relative path. You could do a full path if you wanted. Full paths make my head hurt, so I do relative paths. So once you get to that point, if you've edited this file, manifests profiles.pp, right? So if you get to that point, just put some comments at the top, you should be able to run Puppet. And then it should just say it removed it. We're not doing this EC2 based thing because it seems like that's, I'll just use that for M Collective because it was not very fast for us doing this remotely. Is this making sense so far? This is, go ahead. Um, so I understand that when we told the manifest uh, get rid of this profile for us and it did it, but what, what did it actually do to get rid of it? OK. So I believe I configured this correctly so that if I do present, the question was for anybody that didn't hear, how do we know what Puppet actually did? We know it did the thing, but how did it do it? I'm going to do the same command. I changed it from absent to present, and I'm going to dash dash debug flag. And Puppet should tell me right here, uh, does it make it harder to read when I highlight it? This line where the blue is, executing user bin profiles dash I dash F, and then the path to the, the config file that I deployed as part of Puppet. Right. Right. Puppet knows that's what it should use. And if, for those of you that, this will be a repeat for those of you that were with me earlier today. But I, I have that class, but then I also have this puppet type provider. So I wrote a custom type last night that explained how to do, how to pu it explained to Puppet how to do this thing. And so here I have create, and I say it's profiles, and then dash I, and then dash F, and then the profile you provide. So in order to create these resource types, it's just Ruby code that others have written, in this case I've written it, to create this type that we interact with. Right? And that says, how do you create something? How do you destroy something? How do you check if something already exists? And so what I was able to do with that, switching back over to my Mac, is in my Mac profilers handler, I have this file, which says, ah, if, it's Dar if it's not Darwin, I'm going to fail. I'm going to create these file resources. You guys don't care about the top bits. The bottom bits, this profile manager piece, that's what that resource type, that Ruby code that I showed you, that's the result. Puppet builds this framework for me automatically. So I just type in profile manager. I give it this, this dollar name, which I fill out in that examples file. Then I give it the path to the profile. And then I'm just requiring other resources so it all happens in the right order. And back in manifest profiles, all I'm doing here is just one more layer of abstraction just to make it a little simpler. So this is all you as a consumer have to interact with. Just to say Mac profiles handler, that's the identifier of my configuration profile. That's where I can get it. Do I want it to be present or I want it to be absent? Okay. This, this resource type? Yeah, 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 I put it up on forge.puppetlabs.com. If you search for Mac, you'll see Mac Profiles Handler, and that's this. And so what I showed you, I showed you two pieces. I showed you that one manifest, which had a whole bunch of stuff in it, and I showed you that Ruby code, which had a bunch of stuff in it. That's not something you guys ever have to care about. I've done that work as a puppet guy, and I've created that little piece there, Mac Profilers Handler Manage. That's the only piece you ever have to write in order to use this particular resource type. Right? That's your interface for this. So if I go back into the TextMate version of this, 
change this back to absent, rerun puppet again with this d dash dash debug, which will show me all the commands that were run. In this case, user bin profiles dash r dash p, and it gives it the profiles identifier, edu, psu, UCS active sync, and just to tie it back together, I specified, oops, keep catting the wrong file. I specify that stuff right here in my text made file. That's the identifier that Puppet uses, and that's the path to find it. Yes, sir? No, this is, so if you think of like a Samba server has mounts that relate to a file system path, same concept here. When I say puppet colon slash 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 modules, modules is a mount point. And that relates back on my puppet file system depending on wherever you know, Etsy puppet modules is. It's different on any system, right? In this case, it's Etsy puppet modules. It looks for PSU underscore Mac admins as the module to find this content in. Then it auto loads that file section and it finds PSU UCS mobile config. So just to show you where that file lives, Etsy puppet modules, PSU Mac admins files, uh, PSU UCS config, right? So that's where that file lives. And this syntax is auto loading that, right? And it's just one of those syntaxes where once you learn it, you're fine and it just, Puppet abstracts the other pieces that it needs to in case file paths move or you're on different systems and so on and so forth. So if we download the thing from the forge, we either need to review it or really trust who made it. Sure. We don't really know what it's going to do otherwise. Yeah. Is everything on forge written by Puppet employees? No, it's community contributed. But oftentimes, Puppet Labs employees will give a quick review to something that goes up because there's only about 300 modules up there now. As that number starts to grow, it'll become more of a, a wild west. We don't have the, you know, if you look at it, the app store mentalities, we're more of an Android store than an iTunes store. All right? We don't review everything that comes in. So yeah, take a look at what it does, test it on a test system. You know, these, they're usually pretty self-explanatory, and you can always ask the Twitterverse. So just to kind of take a breather here, this is drinking from a fire hose, be sure, right? If you're sitting there thinking, am I the only one who's not getting it? You're not. Everyone else in the room is probably thinking the same thing, unless I'm totally off base here. Puppet is, not only is it a bit complicated, but it's an entirely different idea than how you guys are managing systems right now, right? This whole state-based declarative model where you're not specifying actions, you don't have scripts, you're not using bash and you know in an SSH for loop. This is an entirely different world and what I'm hoping to do here today is get you guys interacting with the code, interacting with the commands, familiar with how it works and what it can do. Because the idea is once I've specified these things, once I've built my classes, I've done that work. I'm all done now and I can go drink until the next problem comes along. Then I'll build puppet code to solve that problem Right, to deploy that application, to manage that service, to install the packages I need. If the user screws anything up, if they uninstall my profile, if they uninstall my, uh, you know, kill my service or something like that, the next time Puppet runs, it's all corrected. And you get a report saying, something happened, I've corrected it, here's all the information about it. Yes, sir. Uh, most of the thing like I look at, um, most of it is like uh, non-interactive. Let's say that there's like um, no custom uh, resource, let's say, where let's say when you install it, you have to answer certain interactive things, which maybe we can use expect script if we do a scripting. Uh, do you have like uh, any, can you point to like one of the resource, any resource like uh, translate from that kind of things to, uh, to the, um, are you, puppet, asking, are you asking uh, how you pass this. data into Puppet, or are you asking how to convert from scripts to Puppet? I don't understand the question. No, so like, uh, like for example, uh, uh, this example, the profile, like it, it, it don't need interactive to install it, right? I mean, you have just uh, uh, put the options, but sometimes there's some installation and need some interaction oh, uh, to I enter see. that data. Okay. How, I mean, do you yeah, have any so example, like I can, you know, if I need to make my own resource, for example. Yeah. Uh, so this is where I think Alistair is most frustrated with Puppet. Um, 
we are a, and correct me if I'm wrong, sorry, but this, we've had discussions about this. Puppet is, the, the question was, how would you, if, if you need to pass some input from a user perspective or have the user interact with Puppet or something like that, whenever you're doing an install of something, how do you do that? The answer is you cannot. And then it's because Puppet is, is the whole mentality of Puppet is I'm going to make the state the way it is and I'm gonna do it now whether you damn well please. You've told me to do it, I'm gonna do it. And it's, it's a mentality born from servers, right? We, we were grown to manage Linux servers. So we don't yet have an idea of how to you know, deploy an application, wait for the user to close it, then install and do all those things. You can kind of hack around it a little bit, but Monkey is a much better tool for deploying software, waiting for user interaction, taking those actions, and then deploying the software. So where I think of Puppet, in the case of, of that particular use case, Puppet should make sure that all the pieces necessary to run Monkey are installed and maintained on a system, both on the client side and on the server side, and then you leverage a tool which does a much better job in that space to do that work. You can't have Puppet um, check to see if the process is running. Yeah, it can do that. Yeah, well, and then but if the process is not running, then install the app or update. Because that's what yeah. we're waiting on is the user to stop using it. Yeah, but like these systems, we're assuming there's one user, and that's you, the admin, who's affecting changes to the system because you're clear to go. If you need it to be shut down, you can make sure it shuts down first. Sure, but that's like part of the conditional exec that you can do if you're just shelling out uh, you know, ways to work around the fact that you've already deployed a configuration to the system and you want to bring it to a state and you won't need to run that a second time because from that point forward you're just ensuring that state. You won't have to do any custom you know, con action to move it to that state. Some jelly beans? Okay, I see jelly beans? actually is more of a... Uh, to show again, isn't it? Give me the mic. I got, some, I got more stuff. Rusty's got my back. Um, I think what he's actually talking about is more of like a configuration in the wizard mentality. Of okay. Like when I'm configuring a, you know, a server configuration, I need to tell them what I'm doing, tell them where I want to install it, and things like that. You are putting that in text. And you can do that conditionally if you have snowflakes in your server environment. But like, oh, well, this has this role. I'm going to give it that role, and therefore it will inherit this class. And like in, in the Node's PP file, you'll say, okay, these things, there'll be some type of inheritance. I know that they all need this, but I have a custom config because it has this role. If you can break it down into those chunks, it's going to be that role. Uh, then you don't worry about that interactivity because you're just stating it in text. things that I'm, that I'm annoyed about are not that. <laughs> so that's, a that's, a, that's a good question and it's a complicated answer. I think Alistair answered it well and that is there's, as you explore Puppet, it'll start to become more clear that if, it's, if it is a matter of like an, ex, you know, an answers file, you can specify that in Puppet when you're running the command or whether you're just working around it. When it comes to waiting for user interaction, that gets a little rough. So yeah, go ahead. Granularity. If you've got um, 100 machines and they're not configured identically, but you want to update package X on the 35 machines that have it, um, this has the intelligence. I mean, do you have states beyond absent and present? Yeah, so we have states absent and present. You can specify a direct version of the package that you want to install. And at the node level, that's where you're declaring this class with the package. So when you're declaring your state, let's say you've got 1,000 machines and maybe 500 of them are, uh, I don't know how, I said 1,000, right? <laughs> let's say you have 1,000 machines, 500 are Mac, 500 are Linux. On the Mac side, when the node level, you're gonna say, I'm gonna deploy this Photoshop class, which is gonna install everything. That class simply isn't going to apply to the Linux class. And there's a number of ways you could achieve this. One is just not including that class on that set. The other is within the class itself, you're saying, if the operating system is not this, do these things. So let me show you the facts before we move on to the uh, puppet, the user resource business. But if I run factor, in fact, I'd like everybody to run factor in your system now. You get back key value pairs of information. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. One of the things you get back is operating system. So if you're looking to make a determination of whether somebody gets something, you can use this information. 
if you have a group of things that are all Darwin and you only want some of those machines to have the package, then I would then look at the node level to say those nodes shouldn't be getting the class that's managing that package. Does that make sense? Uh, not, not necessarily. In terms of granularity, if, if you should have a certain set of people or don't want, don't want to pay for it or whatever it is, yeah. do you have the ability of, of not pushing it out there um, for those yeah. that don't want it? Absolutely. So let's go back into here. So where I have this node default, this is a catch-all. This is where you actually declare the machines and you use their SSL certificate names to apply to this. So let's say I have node you know, foo.com and I'm going to you know, include package class. And then node bar.com doesn't get it. That's, that's the simplest way to make it granular. There are other ways that I'm not going to bore you with, but this is the simplest, saying this machine gets these classes, this machine gets the other classes. And but you, you still can, have to predefine them. You can't you can, do it, you can't do it um, ad hoc, uh, inspecting the machine as you go. With factor facts, you can. Okay. So this is the way to kind of just specify it as your state. And you can use regular expression here so you don't have to specify every single one. Um, but the, what I was getting at on the factor side, was it this machine that I was on? Oh, I was over here. Pseudo factor dash P. So what I was getting at is you can make these custom, these facts, and you can specify a text file to just load facts from. So you could have a fact that says, don't install this package. And then in your code, you say, if I have this fact, don't install the package. Just don't do it. So you can have that lever, and that would be dynamic. Right? If you've got either a text file that you provision as part of your imaging process that has the fact, or you have some kind of dynamic way of generating this. And I'm guessing you guys didn't see the custom fact slide. Let me pull that up. That's all it takes to write a custom fact. At the top where it says role, that's your fact name. Over here where it says cat Etsy role, that's simply a command that you want to run on the Mac, on your agent, that's going to, whatever the result of that command is going to be, will be assigned to the fact named role. Right? So that's how we get operating system equals Darwin and all this stuff. We've written this to say, how do I determine what operating system I'm on? So does that make sense? Okay, all right, so back to playing with puppet, pseudo puppet resource user. We're kind of hopping all around the puppet universe. This particular tool is about inspecting the resource abstraction layer. And it's going to inspect your system and return everything it knows about the users on the system. All right, my output is going to look different than yours. But after a little bit here, we will get it back. You guys probably already have it. <coughs> How's it going, everybody? OK. So there's user Ryan. And there's my password. And there's my shell. And my home directory, my GID, and my comment. So this is a way of just playing with Puppet. It's an inspection tool. It interacts with the resource abstraction layer and lets you inspect everything that's going on in the system. No, those are correct. So what I was saying before is that in order to yeah, in order to generate the password to supply to Puppet, it needs to be a salted SHA five one or five hundred twelve hash. These are salted five twelve hashes. Yeah. Ex yeah. Yep. Exactly, you could do that. All I was saying is the, the function that we provided for creating it doesn't run on a Mac. Uh, it's just kind of a helper utility to create the function for you. But as you say, you can, yeah, yeah. So this is Puppet Resource. To give me a breather so I can get some water, I'm going to give you guys one more command. Puppet doc-r type, pipe that through less. Puppet space doc. Give it the argument of dash r, which means reference. And I want the type reference, resource type, as it were. Then I'm going to pipe that through less. And then it's going to go want want because of the broken OS 10 defaults provider. So 
Back up to Etsy puppet modules. No, I'm good. Yeah, so, uh, and then I'm going to move OS 10 defaults to my home directory. And then I'm gonna be told I can't do that. I'm gonna do it with sudo, and then I can. So the reason we had that issue, again, that OS 10 defaults, if you were in my, my lecture earlier, this is a community provided type and provider for working with the OS 10 default system. So that's awesome. Bad news is it's broken. So I have to get it out of the way. I don't know why I gave it to all of you to torture you guys, I think. So anyone still working on this? Moving the OS 10 defaults thing out of the way. Once you get that, you can run the puppet doc command again and it should behave, yay, it behaves much better now. So, you can take a look at that, and it's just, I'm sorry? Ambiguous option down. Pseudo puppet doc, space dash. I asked for raised hands, Swansea. Easy. That. And then I ran that. All right, I will help you. Are you in Etsy Puppet? Etsy Puppet, mo Etsy Puppet Modules, please, sir. I did PWD. All right, for everyone else, feel free to peruse that list. Take a look at it. That's all the resource types that ship with Puppet. When you see a resource type that you're interested in, and it looks like it applies to a Mac, try going Puppet Resource and then that type, like user, there's group, try running service or package, right? So there's four right there. So again, that was puppet resource. And then here you could put in user, service, group, Package, file won't work, because inspecting all the files in the system is a little bananas, so we don't allow that. But these are types that you can inspect. Puppet doc-r type will tell you about all the types that ship. So take a moment, play with that, ask me questions. I'm going to hydrate my throat. Okay. Huh? Oh, I got fancy water. Is that the poison water that, uh, that kills us? It's empty. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, thanks, guys. So maybe this is the water that doesn't kill you. Think about that for a minute. Any questions about what you're seeing? <laughs> yeah. Um, if, you, if you have public schedule to run, if you had Puppet scheduled to run on a regular basis uh, and you had a file that you had to make sure was in place or that was un untouched, uh, Tripwire kind of setup, okay. um, could you use Puppet to function as in, in the same way that Tripwire does? Uh, to sort of. If you ran Puppet every minute or so, then you could catch changes as they're occurring. Yep. Um, and that would be the closest. Puppet doesn't have any kind of active monitoring, but it can inspect the resource, know that it's changed, and tell you about it, even if you don't decide to enforce the change. How intensive is it to run something like, uh, how intensive is it to run Puppet every minute? No, pretty <laughs> intensive? Ruby is so, being uh, abstracted. It's going to be a more resource. Yeah, so. Than than what I'd recommend okay. is instead of doing a whole Puppet agent dash T every minute, Right. that you would run a puppet apply against a very particular manifest of things you want to watch. That's going to be so much quicker. You don't have any interaction with the puppet master. You're running that locally. So you'd have a manifest locally that you're running puppet apply against every minute, which would tell you all the bits that you want to know. And then it'll, it'll talk back to the master if yeah, it fails. Right. And okay. you could do like a, I think it's dash dash report option on apply to have it send a report back. And yeah, that, that'll be a much... You'll be much happier with that. Okay. The, the alternative, if you wanted to keep it on the master, would be puppet agent dash T, but dash dash tags. If you look up tags, like puppet or Google puppet tags, um, those allow you to tag specific resources and then run puppet only against those resources. So those will be the only things in the catalog. And so the puppet agent run will take a lot less time. 
Could he also, if you're using, if it's on a Mac, if you're using Crank and you can watch for a file change and just have a list of file changes and then run Puppet when you see those files change. Because oh, okay. we use Let's Puppet, we, we, uh, on the laptops, we only run Puppet when it comes on the network. You can do the same thing and just look for file change with a Crank script. Right. Cool. Like, yeah. It's also just like launch thing. It's like saying that Puppet should, do, should create files. Like Puppet can do, you know, it's Unix. It can do anything. But using the native already there, supported by the operating system, supported by the operating system vendor, like launch name, and that specifically has keys that you can feed it for. If this file exists or if it's, a if it's absent, let's let's run a job, then you're going through the right channels to do so. <laughs> now, Biden, now Ryan. Huh? I was, I was, this was another, you know, you were supposed to put a little something up in my pocket because I'm talking about how Puppet is not supposed to do everything on your system. I'm all out. I'm all out of money. But thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sure. It's open source. We're doing it for the for the you know the good of the order. Uh, so anyway, is anybody using these commands? Are you checking out some resources, seeing what's running on the system? All right. If you do service, obviously we're getting all of our LaunchD services. This is iterating over launch agents, launch daemons for both users and system. Uh, does anybody know how long this first session is to last, Rusty? Sorry, bud. What's that? Okay. All right. So if you guys want, uh, at this point, we can take a bigger break and resume when the session, uh, the second session resumes. If you guys choose to come back for the second session, I'm going to go into the other examples that are in that PSU Mac folder and hopefully write some new Puppet code with you guys, explore this a little further, and then do some more M, M Collective commands. But there's not a whole lot we can do with M Collective uh, today. But this is a bit of an awkward demo since Puppet's kind of complicated, but I'm hoping to just kind of expose you guys to it and give you an opportunity to ask me questions. So feel free to come back. You're not required to, obviously, if you have other sessions you'd like to see in the next section. Uh, but go ahead and take a break. Get sugared up. Break will uh, happen until 3 p.m. is the start of the next session. Okay. So cool. whenever you want to start up, though. All right. And if anybody would rather sit here and play with Puppet, uh, let me know. Uh, they have refreshed the break area. I saw Rice Krispie Treats. Oh, cool. I don't know if they're still there. I saw them. And if you'd, rather, uh, if you'd rather hang out here during the, the part of the break, check out the examples folder. Uh, check out some other code there, and you can run puppet apply against code in that folder. Let's start off back on our Macs in Etsy Puppet Lab's Puppet, oops, Etsy Puppet Lab Puppet Modules PSU Mac Admins. Once you're there, I want to go one step further, go into manifests. This mic is on, right? Is it over, coming over the PA back there? Okay. Make sure it's recorded for the video. <laughs> no, I was asking, because you guys can hear it in the speakers, right? I can only hear myself. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were asking someone up in the booth, and I looked up, and like, there's nobody up there. Who are you talking to? I got buddies up there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Alistair. All right, so I am in Etsy Puppet Modules, PSU underscore Mac Admins, Manifests, and I'm going to edit, what am I going to edit? init.pp. This is a special file. It represents the top level class of this module. Don't worry about that so much. The point is, this construct's already built, and we're just going to take advantage of it. <coughs> so I edited that in VI. I guess I'm kind of leading you guys on to VI. Let's, let's use, would you guys prefer to use TextMate? TextMate, VI, Nano? How many arms? All right. <laughs> Whatever you want to edit it with. Nope. <laughs> What's, notepad? No, yeah, notepad, anybody? Notepad, come on, come on, come on. 
<laughs> All right. So w whatever editor you want to use, open up that file, that init.pp. I'm going to use TextMate here. Um, actually, let me try to get my bundle. Does everybody have the bundle installed? They can go to bundle puppet. For those of you that are using TextMate, yes or no? It is? OK, so i got to fix mine real quick. But apply examples TextMate. Hey, I think it sort of worked. So is apply very similar to like run once? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a local, it's, it's Puppet Apply is usually used when you're developing your code just to kind of hack on it, see if it works, hack on it, see if it works, and then you put it up on your Puppet Master and it just, you know, then the oh, agent well, master will. goes against the, the master and apply just goes against the local? Yeah, apply is all local and uh, run and once is just. All right, I believe I now have the bundle, Z bundle. Let me quit text edit here. Text me. I keep calling it text edit. I blame you, Phil. Nope. Text me. Yeah. Notepad. Can you install Notepad on, on Mac? Have you made that work? Yeah, once you put Windows on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so manifest. And again, I'm opening up inet.pp. Now I have my puppet syntax highlighting. Everything's nice and pretty. Let me improve the text. <clears throat> uh -huh. What? What do I do? How do you make the text bigger? Oh, God. Oh. I don't know. I'm not a text mate guy. There's even an Apple store right there. I, I'm hitting it. Nothing's happening, guys. I tried it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to just make life easier. I'm going to go into bundles, puppet. <laughs> And we're going to make a file resource. So I'm just going to click on this, which is going to build the structure for me. Bundles puppet file. Oh. And for, for anyone else, feel free to just build this here. And I'm going to view font bigger, and then I'll show you where I got. For those of you following along with TextMate, what I did to build that is I put my cursor down here in the cla underneath classes. Bundles, puppet, file. So this text is just kind of handy. It can build the, the example structure for you if that's a little easier. Otherwise, if you're in VI or Nano or Pico or text edit, so notepad, damn it. Oh, there we go. All right, so I did look at that, and it said it doesn't say shift there. So I'm guessing it's just, it just hates me. <laughs> ah, I see. All right. So that's what it looks like. And what we're saying here is this is the file resource we want. Instead of name, I want to put the path to the file. In this case, I'm just going to create a file temp hello underscore world dot txt. And then we give it the properties that we care about. Ensure file. I'm going to give it one more. In this case, I put in content, again, the hash rocket. And just as another overview, what we've done here, file is the resource type. This is the title of the resource, temp hello. Then we have properties and their values. Property ensure. We ensure that it's a file. The value is file. For content, it's whatever we want inside that file. So I'm going to put hello world. And then I'm going to put a new line character in there so that it, when I cat it, there's a new line. It's not that particular about it. Uh, the, it, it. Well, it isn't. You can, for instance, do this is perfectly valid, but horrendous. So the point is make sure that you have commas after your, your key value pairs. 
that you have a colon after your title and that your curly braces are in the right places. Otherwise, yeah, the, you don't have to have the spacing exactly like me unless you want to be a cool kid. So does this make sense, what we've done here? Any questions about this? So I saved my file. Anybody need more time? I've saved my file. I'm going to go over to the terminal. And I already have an example, examples init.pp, which is including that class. That's already done for me, so we don't even have to worry about that for right now. I'm going to do sudo puppet. I'm assuming that we're in the Mac and Mins module again. So if you haven't, if you aren't in that, you're going to want a CD. Oh, crap. Huh? Yeah. You're going to CD into that directory if you're not already there. And then you're going to run super puppet apply examples init.pp. This is going to declare the class that we've just written, which has that file resource in it. Oh my god. Why oh my god? Oh, it took four seconds to run. <laughs> no, no, not particularly. Anybody need more time with this? Hey hate you. All right. So there we go. Hello world.txt. What's that? No, no problem at all. Oops, C, change that to an S, ensure. Not ensure, so go oh. back into your, your manifest Sorry. there. No problem. The manifest? Yeah, that init.pp where you were writing that file resource. Okay, thank you. I'll yeah. yeah. If you get errors when you run this, check that manifest again. Make sure that the spelling matches this file resource here. Is this making sense, what we were able to do? Was that useful to go through that exercise? What's that? Yeah, so once you've run that, I should be able to cat temp hello world, and I get hello world. Now here's something else for you to try. After you get this done, run Puppet multiple times. We're not recreating that file. Nothing's happening. Puppet is able to check for the existence of the file. It's able to check that the content of the file matches exactly what we have. And so it doesn't need to do anything. Again, this is about states, not about actions. So if I remove temp hello world, ugh, sudo remove everybody, sudo rm, max. Nah, this is good practice for me. It's good practice. Thank you, though. I, I should not be this, uh, the red-hatted men that doesn't use sudo. Because I live in puppet land. We don't run commands on systems. What are you talking about? All right, so once we've removed the file, we can run puppet again. Obviously, puppet's going to deploy the file again, right? Run puppet a few more times. Nothing happens. Rusty's pleased. Rusty's deploying this in the labs next fall, right? <laughs> so here's something else. Let's edit hello world in temp. So temp, hello world, whatever editor you like. And I'm going to say, uh, I, yeah, sudo vim. And I'm going to say, instead of hello world, exactly, goodbye world. Let's even make it goodbye, cruel world. All right, so that's our file. Next time we run Puppet, just to, so I've changed hello world, that file. I've changed the content. Now when I run Puppet, I want to give you guys one more option. 
show underscore diff at the end. Two dashes, show underscore diff. Two Fs on diff. It's an extra option. Let me make this text bigger, right? Because you guys are having problems reading that. Show underscore, that's not helpful. Show underscore diff. What Puppet's going to do now is change the file and tell us exactly what changed. With me so far? All right, let's take this another step. So this is actually changing the file explicitly to what you have there. It's not whatever we set in content. You had extra stuff, it's all gone too. It's not making sure that just that line's there. Exactly. This is about authoritatively managing a file. There are pieces of Puppet that allow you to edit particular lines of a file. This resource is about managing an entire file. You would want to look for file underscore line or augius. Both of those will manage individual lines. Is there a way to do the show diff without it actually applying to the file from Puppet? Yeah, that's, that's the next step here. So let's edit hello world again, everybody. Let's edit that text file. Instead of hello world, thank you. Instead of hello world, we're going to put the uh, PSU Mac admin admins team are awesome. Where's the applause? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, they're awesome. And Rusty's been great. So I'm going to put them in there. And then we, we're going to cat temp hello world. Right? So PSU Mac admin staff are awesome. Then I'm going to run that sudo puppet command again, but with an, another option. Oh boy, I don't like my command line options in that Windows box. So sudo puppet apply, examples in init pp, we did the dash dash show underscore diff, and now the dash dash no op, n-o-o-p. This triggers puppet to do a simulation run, not an enforcement run. It's going to inspect the system state against the desired state, which is inside that manifest, and is going to give you what would occur. Let's run this again. Puppet's telling you it would have removed that line and added hello world back. At the end here, it's telling you it was a no-op, right? A full simulation of what would occur if you told it to do it. Right, just for proof, I can cat the file again. I don't need to pseudo temp, pseudo <laughs> cat. Right, so my file is still the PSU Mac and Min staff are awesome. All right, is it making sense so far? This is the, that, the basic underlying model. Instead of the complicated stuff I started off with, I probably would have more seats in the room if I started with this, I think. But it's a lot cooler in here now. You notice how different, <laughs> how different that is? Maybe it was just because I was uh, flustered. Oh, okay. Rusty had the AC turned up. Oh, yeah? He was saying he was sweating All right. So, any questions about this? All right, let's look at some other examples. Again, still in my Mac admins module, my PSU Mac admins module. No, go ahead. Uh, so, I have a question. Um, you know, we're running these examples, just applying them. And if you if you want all of them to run, you would actually you would have a node.pp file that would define what classes you want. Exactly, and you just start stitching them together. Okay. I want to do this, 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 and this. And that's the, the really great benefit of Puppet is that you can stitch all of these separate ideas together to compose a node. Okay. Yeah, and we could technically do that in this this examples file too. I have one file for each idea, but we could create one example file for all the ideas and apply them in a group. Right, the examples are just modeling those node declarations. Any more questions? Was there a question in the back, Rusty, or are you guys doing? It's the next. Okay. So let's take a look at examples. Oops, sorry, not examples. Manifests. Just keeping you on your toes, Phil. Just keeping you on your toes. So I want to look at manifests MCX. 
in Etsy, Puppet, Modules, PSU underscore Mac admins. One of the things we can manage is MCX. It's a little, little ugly, but basically there I have a variable, doc left MCX, which is saying here's all of these, here's this plist. I actually got this plist from Workgroup Manager. I'll show you how to do, how to reverse engineer this in a minute. I don't expect you to be building this plist by yourself. Once you use Workgroup Manager to apply the MCX that you want to manage in Puppet, I'll show you an easy way to get this plist back. But anyway, here's one that says com.apple.doc orientation state once value left. A little further down, you see the actual Puppet resource, this guy here. MCX computers guest insert present doc left MCX, that variable that is assigned to the plist, the MCX plist. Further down the file, you'll see Ryan's doc. In this case, I would like us to change this to say Mac doc. I think I am just going to pseudo shell. <laughs> the puppet way, folks. No more pseudo. So manifests, where was I? MCX. All right. Read only file my ass. All right. So I want to change Ryan's doc to Mac doc. All right. So scroll down the file until you saw Ryan's doc. We're just going to change the title of this to Mac doc since we're not on my Mac anymore. We're on yours. And then the DS name, thank you, Phil, will go from Ryan to Mac. All right, so everything else is going to leave the same. This one, if you actually looked at the plist, I'm setting it in the content parameter, just putting the plist in there. And this is state right, or the, the value for the doc is right. Uh, these, are, these are properties of the MCX type. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got the MCX resource type up top. Pointing at it is not working because my arms are not like rubber man's. That MCX resource type has a number of properties, one of those being DS name, DS type, et cetera. Let's go ahead and save out that file. Anybody need more time editing this piece? Except for Phil. So quit that out. And then in examples MCX, I'm just going to show you this. You don't have to actually open it. All I'm doing is including that class, right? Just declaring it. Again, this is what the node declaration would look like on your Puppet Master. So let's apply it. Puppet apply. See, now I'm trained to use sudo when I'm doing Puppet apply. I can't win. mcx.pp. I'm going to do verbose. Why not? Show you guys another command line option. This is going to apply that manifest. It's going to apply the mcx onto this system. So pseudo puppet apply MCX, there's a syntax error for me, probably not for you guys, unless. Yeah, well, yeah, we all got it. Way to go. Uh, all right, so manifest line five. Sorry, I need to actually get in the right file, then I can help you guys. Uh, what is going on here? Well, I think this. Yeah, there you go. So we don't interpolate the quotes. Change the top quote after that doc left MCX. Actually, you know what? You guys could just delete all of this because this doesn't apply. We're going to be doing the other one anyway. Just delete all those bits unless you want to change the quotes. How do you do that? Just double D. Just double D it. So the, the quote is here. If you want to change this to double quotes, from double quote to single quote, and then if the bottom below P list, or you can just delete from this single quote or double quote on your screen all the way up to doc. We're, we really cared about the bottom section, and apparently uh, the Rockstar Energy Drink fuel testing last night wasn't quite up to quality assurance standards. Uh, just delete from this part so that all you have on your screen 
is MCX computers guest. So from MCX computers guest up to the class statement, then we're just left with the MCX that actually works. Hmm. Well, don't we have to apply it to a computer itself? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being an idiot. Get rid of that, too. Because that was the MCX part for the part we deleted. I really... Yeah, just, just get rid of it because I'm, I'm an idiot. So take it all out. So, that, so delete all the way down to below the computer's guest so that all you have is but for a particular user to class PSU Mac admins. Right, so you, I am some days a professional, I promise. Does that make sense where to? No, let's see here. Okay, okay, here we go. Good. All right, so once you deleted that and you run it like this, what you should get is it actually applying the plist, which is to change your dock to the right. But you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to log out. MCX takes a refresh, so you can either yeah. Kill. Uh, yeah, you can do silo kill all doc. Uh, oh. Sudo MCX refresh then. Uh, my case would be Ryan. Alright. Alright. That didn't work for me, but. Dash, dash N, Ryan? Did it work for you guys? Oh, you, you changed yours to Mackie, right? No, 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 yeah, I, 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 don't look behind the curtains. I only have user Ryan, but is it working for you guys? Yeah. Okay, all right, don't worry about my screen then. Who cares about my machine? Is it working for yours? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's MCX in a nutshell when it works and it's not against my machine. Oh, right, I'm, I'm, yeah, let's. G you do sudo. Try logging out and logging back in. Oh my god, that's just, it's like Windows reboot. This is how Apple MCX works, buddy. I, I can't, I can't help you there. There it is. So let's see if this works for me, logging back in. There it goes. Yay, right doc. So yeah, so our provider, our MCX provider does not do an MCX refresh for you and do all the bits it would need to kill the dock and all the order. I don't fault Puppet for that. MCX is a cumbersome beast. So expect that you'll be managing MCX and for things like the dock, you're gonna have to have the user log out or manage the killing of the dock, which is not really a stateful thing. So the last piece I wanted to show you on this yeah, like, I really, I can't stop my face from doing that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault, though. I have a problem with controlling my face. So once you get this and you've applied that manifest for the MCX, when I showed you earlier, you could do workgroup manager for modifying your MCX and then run sudo puppet resource MCX to get this back. So let's say you were in workgroup manager, you apply settings that you like. This will get them back to you in ready to use puppet format. Enjoy my crunching up there, guys. These are really good mint, uh, mint malt balls, though. So, just malt balls. <laughs> malt balls. <laughs> malt balls are delicious. So, there's uh, MCX. This is effectively what was in that manifest, right? So. MCX that you create yourself with Workgroup Manager, you can use it in here. Does that make sense in theory? So you apply basic MCX to the user, then you run this to get what the... Yeah, like on your, on your workstation when you're tinkering, figuring out what you want to apply. Uh, pseudo puppet resource, and then the resource type is MCX. 
that's going to inspect the system and pull back all the MCX that's currently being applied to the system. So that in Workgroup Manager, on your workstation, you can just apply the MCX you want, get it back in puppet consumable format. If you wanted to write the plists yourself, you certainly could. If you wanted to make it an often instead of a once. Right. So, so we, we, we apply this MCX to specific puppet file. Is it, uh, it must also be included in something more general that resource is going back and reading through, or is resource inspecting the actual your resource, this resource, as given, will tell Puppet to inspect the system, look for this MCX setting, and the same thing is, as always, it'll check to see if it exists and matches the state you want, it'll create it, modify it, or destroy it as it sees fit. So that's the MCX example. Any questions on this? Obviously there's a ton you can do on MCX. It's a little bit of a convoluted workflow. MCX is a little bit convoluted. So I'm not sure what to tell you on that part, but it works once you start doing it, and then you log out or reboot. It's trying to get a rise out of fill there, but so no questions? Let's move on to another example. Let's do the power resource. This is a community provided one. Again, I'm still in Etsy Puppet Modules PSU Mac admins. I'm going to look at manifestspower.pp. So manifestpower.pp, this is the class where I've already written this resource. Again, this was a community contribution for managing, especially for interacting with PM set. It's pretty readable, and the, the guy included comments. This is his example, never sleep. And then you just give it the booleans whatever you would supply to PM set. So you could do a man PM set and learn more about that or read his documentation on the type. But any questions on what you see there? I think it's pretty readable right out of the box. Sure. Uh, if Puppet is all about state and not about tasks, it's relying on existing, existing binaries to do whatever it needs to do. Uh, so if something, you know, if, if a user deletes PM set, is Puppet going to throw an error at that point? or Yes, it will. Okay. So one of the things, if you do a dash dash debug mode, one of the things it does before it tries to apply any resource is check for required binaries. And so it'll say, like, checking user bin profiles or something like that. And if it doesn't find it, it's going to report back and say, this binary is missing. And it won't even try applying anything at that okay. point. 404 not found? For what? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the question was, if anybody didn't hear the initial question, if someone deletes a binary the Puppet needs to do its business here, Puppet will complain that it can't find that binary. By putting it in the resource type, it knows that that, that uh, binary is required. So a, a general question that I've had, if I'm just you know, learning Puppet over the past several weeks or so, is the relationships between classes and modules. OK. And Sometimes it seems as though you have. I, I'm, I'm not following. You know, when you use a class and when you use a module. Okay. Um, well, so. And the answer is you would use both at the same time. Okay. So um, modules are the containers that everything goes in. Your puppet code, the files. You're going to learn later that you can build dynamic files called templates. Custom puppet code, like the resource types, like this, goes into a module. The custom facts you might write. All that content goes into a module. And really all a module is is a collection of folders that are, that are in a very rigid structure that Puppet expects to see. Inside the manifests folder, the one we've been working with here, that's where all your classes go. Classes are the Ruby construct that contain all of your code, all of your manifest code. And each class is meant to represent an idea and is unique. So you can have an SSH class. You can have a PSU Mac admins power class. And that represents the idea of the thing that you want to achieve. And then once you have that class, you go to declare that class and you use this include keyword and give it the class name that you want. And I can do multiple class names here or multiple things. I could say include foo, include bar. And it's going to pull the bar class, the foo class, and that power class. And those are all going to make up the, the configuration on this system. 
so y you include classes. Do you include modules? Nope, the modules are that rigid set of where things go. Like if I exit out of this. So can you have classes of the same name in different modules? Really, tree's not a command? Sorry, I'm sorry? So can you have classes of the same name in different modules? No, so a class is unique, and the, the, the class, the initial class, usually matches to the module name. Okay. So if you had an SSH folder as the module, in manifests init.pp, there would be the SSH class. There's a relationship between them, and they're all unique. You can only have one SSH module, one SSH class, you know. Per puppet instance. Yeah. Okay. And technically, it's when those are deployed or declared onto a server, you can only have one of them. Technically, you can have more of them in your puppet environment, but that's more advanced. But basically, just to sum up, the modules are a predictable set of folders that all your code goes into. Classes are where all the puppet code goes that describe how you want your system configured. And then you can use reference those classes when you're declaring things to say, these machines get these classes. So in this power example, we have a never sleep, right? But what if you want to have a never sleep sort of a, a standard laptop setup, that sort of thing. Would you create a separate class for each of those and then include those based on the node or sure. what kind of node it is? Yeah, so the, so the question was before Rusty got over there, uh, if you had, if we look back at this power example, how would you want to organize multiple you know, power profiles? Uh, so if I looked in this, this is sort of just the class I built for this demo which has this never sleep resource. If you wanted to have multiple pro profiles, maybe you'd have them in different classes. Or maybe you would use a fact in here to say, if it's a laptop, I'm going to give it this. Right? So let's look back at factor. You could have custom facts for determining what the thing is. We also have facts here about whether something's a VM by default. And you have other facts in here about uptime, about how much memory. Um, somebody might have already written something about power state, right? Like on battery, I'm going to use this. On something else, I'm going to use this. But I think a really useful one is, is this a laptop or is it hardware? And then what you would do here, inside this manifest, you would end up having something that looks like this. I'm not actually going to save it out, but so you would have this conditional logic that says if it matches this criteria that it's a laptop, I'm going to use this. And obviously, this would actually be hardware, right? You want your hardware never to sleep, but yeah. Does that make sense? So when you combine factor facts with conditional logic, it becomes really powerful. Go ahead. So that first bit, PSU Mac admins, that is a direct relationship to the folder name. Right? This is direct relationship. This extra piece after these two colons is within the namespace. They're not classes that are directly related to each other. It's just a relation to the folder, to that module. So in this case, it's power.pp. Exactly. And that's exactly what Puppet does. It looks for power PP in PSU Mac admins. Man, in, the, in that module. So it's, it's a convoluted set a structure, but it's a predictable structure that Puppet uses to do its business. So you can't define multiple classes in the same file? You can, but the auto-loading won't find them. You'll have to work around that. It's not recommended that you do it. Sir? Every time Puppet runs, Factor collects all of its facts data and gives it to Puppet. Automatically? Mm -hmm. So Puppet has all those key values, like operating system, uptime, memory free, all of those are available automatically in Puppet on every Puppet run, whatever the state is of that fact at that moment. All right, so let's do more of this. Let's apply this now. First thing I want to do is check out my energy settings. So I'm going to open up system preferences. Go into Energy Saver. 
I don't know what these lab machines are set to. They're probably already set to never sleep. Mine's set to sleep, you know, 10 minutes, whatever that is. What, is, what does yours say? Is it already set to never sleep? Yeah, it's set to never. Okay, change it to something. Something not that. Just so that we can witness the power of puppet, the power of the puppets. Did you see the power of the Cheetos? No, the power of Cheetos. Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. Examples power. Once you've set your power settings to something other than never sleep, go ahead and run puppet apply on examplespower.pp. Feel free to take a look at examples pp. I hope it's clear to you now. That is the declaration of the class that you've defined in the manifest folder. The manifest folder is merely a collection of all of that code. The examples folder models those node declarations. So if I run that, it's going to modify my power settings, uh, energy saver, and it's been changed, right? And again, what's that? Boom. Boom, yeah, as, as uh, Steve would say. So I can run this again. It looks like there was some other bits that didn't take the first time. Some puppet providers are written better than others. This one apparently can't determine uh, the wake on LAN and auto restart business. Not sure what that's about. Again, it's a community supported module. Some of them are of varying quality. I believe that's OS server only. Oh, okay. All right. So it's just not excluding those properties. Um, all right. So, anyway, you see that it's not reapplying everything that you've done. Again, it's stateful. If I go in and change just the computer sleep, oops, sorry, I just, I'm just going to change my display sleep to one minute. If I run Puppet again, in addition to those two erroneous properties, I'm going to get my display sleep. It's going to change back to zero from one minute. Zero meaning never. So Puppet is going to manage things on a piece-by-piece -piece basis, and it's going to compare the state that's running against the state that you want. Again, just like every other resource type, you can simulate the changes and have those reported back to you before you actually make a change. A lot of the financial institutions that use Puppet run in no-op mode all week long to generate reports of what their engineers are submitting to be run on Puppet. Someone reviews those on Friday, and they run automatically on a Saturday maintenance window. So that's, you know, there's a lot of different workflows out there that works for, for them. Any questions about power, sir? The, uh... Oh, the, the never power management, never sleep, where's... I guess is the, the never sleep, where's that defined? I'm just, I don't know where that. You want to know where the, the resource is that does this? Yeah. Uh, so given that's a community one, if I step down a level so that I'm now in Etsy puppet modules, I have three folders in here. One of them is puppet-osx-power management or power MGMT. You see that? Inside there is a folder called lib puppet, where all custom types live. In there, I'm going to take a look at the provider. It's a big long string. I don't expect all of you to follow along. Just take a look at the code up here. And actually, let me open that up with TextMate. Shut up, TextMate. All right, power management, lib puppet, provider. That'll get a little bit more syntax highlighting for you. This one's a little more complicated than the one I wrote last night, but let's see if we can find. What, what specific property were you interested in, sir? Uh, I picked the entire thing one. Okay. Yeah, so here's uh, disk sleep. And I guess he's saying that's PM set dash A, disk sleep, and then however many minutes you set. Display sleep, PM set dash A, display sleep, and minutes, whatever we set. So when we were setting that Boolean 0, 1, 10, whatever it is, that represented the minutes. And this is the Ruby code that's interacting with PM set to make that happen. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is to do with, hey, we're not checking for the fact of if, it, if it's a server or not. Cool. So I'm just, that, 
the correlation, what, what's the glue that ties the, that directory for the provider to the definition in the class? Okay, so the, the question was, what's the glue that ties this code back to the class? And that's, the glue is Puppet itself, right? Puppet, I guess visually, if you look at the top here, if you're interested in Ruby, we have this Puppet type class, and we're instantiating a new type called Power Management, and we also have the Puppet Provider class. So the type is the thing. Type is package. Provider is yum, RPM, PKG, right? These are the providers. And so the glue is somebody's written this Ruby code and they're using our classes and Puppet's parsing this file and auto-loading things. All right, so but by where it's located? Yes. Um, under that modules? Yes. Um, this, it just auto-loads? Yes. For auto-loading that content, lib puppet provider, then the name of the type, then the, the specific provider. So let's take a look at, back at my slides here. I think I have a better slide for this. Uh, this one. So here is providers for package. And here you see AIX, apt, MSI, PKG, all of these different Ruby files are the providers for the resource type called package. All right, so the type is package, and then you want to be able to support multiple things underneath package, and this is a predictable place. This happens to be built-in Puppet, but that same thing, Puppet provider type name. In this case, there is a lib Puppet provider power management. Any other questions about that? That's probably a, a good point to, uh, to capture is that this is all customizable, resource types, factor facts, the M collective agents, everything you do in Puppet, we provide some framework for you to extend on top of. Some things are easier to extend than others, right? I think the lowest barrier to entry is the custom facts doing this, right? Filling in the blanks is enormously easier than writing your own Puppet code, or sorry, writing your own Ruby code. All right, so if there are no other questions about that, I'll go back to another example. Do you, you have one? Go ahead. Um, Thank you guys for, for handling it. Hello. Uh, all the examples we're kind of seeing are basically Puppet um, using Unix binaries to do what it needs to do in most cases. Um, if I wanted to do something really stupid like if when puppet finds this condition it should pop up through apple script some finder you know dialogue is that possible or uh not not really i think the way i might approach that off the cuff is a custom fact <laughs> again i always go back to custom facts but in your manifest you would say if i encounter this custom fact if this fact has a certain value mm -hmm. then i would interface with apple script Right? Somebody might have written an AppleScript provider already where you can directly call out to AppleScript, but you can always call out to an exec, which will shell out, and then you can shell out to AppleScript. Right? I see. <laughs> but um, just, just to be clear, Puppet's role, especially right now for Macs, I don't know if future plans for the company are going to differ, but we aren't designing software for interacting with users. Alistair said it best earlier that Puppet's world is the only user is you, the administrator, who's making a state. Right, so that's we don't ever we don't ever care what the user might want to do. We're just going to make the state that you want, for better or worse. Right. right. And that might be bad because uh, you know it might be at the login window, it might be yes, at, you know. And no point am I saying that's a good idea. Right. Sure. <laughs> <You're giving laughs> example. Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So it's it's a complicated issue, and it's not something that puppets tackled yet. Um, for packages, especially Monkey is a much better product, and I like to think of us as complementary. Puppet can provide all the pieces you need to use Monkey. Sir. Uh, so I guess my question is: There's the ensure present and ins or ensure absent. Uh -huh. Is there the option to set it once and only once type deal at all? Uh, you could write your own type to do something like that. Okay. Right, like 
just like insurers a property, you can have a property where based on the value, you do something else in the Ruby code. So maybe if the property is one time, it'll run at one time and drop like a file to check against, something like that. One time runs are not, again, not really the puppet way. Right. But I was discussing with a gentleman over here somewhere, these guys, that you can achieve that with, again, a little bit of factor trickery. So let's say, I actually want to search for this for you because I think this is going to be useful for a lot of you. First of all, docs.puppetlabs.com slash learning. If there's one URL you guys write down, write this one down. It is a step-by-step -step walkthrough guide, lowest level to high level of what Puppet is, how to use it. It'll walk you through writing some Puppet code. It's going to do a much better job of giving you like a two-hour lab than I have. Our documentation writers are pretty awesome. But one of the things on here I want to Google for is puppetfacts.d, not facts dot, dot d. Uh, hey, I'm looking for this, this module of the week blog post. Because this will explain how to, how to install it and stuff like that. Uh, so if you search for what I just searched for, puppetfacts.d blog, you'll find this, which is like Etsy factor facts.d. It's just a directory that Puppet looks for. And where is him actually putting things in there? Did I miss it? Anyway, it's a text file. And I'm just going to show you over here what it looks like. Let's see, factor, Puppet Labs, factor, facts.d. Here's one from the Puppet Enterprise installer. So it's a text file that has a key equals value. So this is just something you can drop down, and that becomes a factor fact that you get when you call factor. You get fact underscore stomp underscore port with the value 61613. This is something our installer uses for post configuration. So what I was suggesting to answer the question is that let's say in your class you say if you know we were using the Xcode. So let's say Xcode installed equals true. Oops, I'm sorry equals false, then I'm going to you know, install the Xcodes. Right? All the Puppet code to install Xcode would go here. And then Puppet would evaluate that fact every time it's loading this class. And so if you have a text file that you drop in as part of this, right? you install the Xcode, drop a fact in facts.d that says Xcode installed equals true, right? Is this making sense? Puppet's going, you know, you're going to write a file resource that drops this in here at the end of your one time class. Then every time Puppet evaluates this class, it's going to evaluate this conditional expression, find that it's not equal to false, and leave things alone. So dollar sign is just factory. Yeah, it's just, it's just calling back a variable. Okay. Yep. So it's a bit of hackery, but you can do it. I guess the short answer. Do we have other examples that I haven't covered yet? Where am I? Actually, this will be fine. Now Curve that five. Released, uh, demo actually browsing. Is browsing modules now yeah, yeah, you can browse browse modules. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> So 2714 would allow you to do, uh, and you know what? I think I've got 2714 on my regular laptop. All right, so Puppet version. Yeah, I know you guys have 14. So if you do Puppet, uh, hold on one second. Let me, let me fix this. M Puppet, Puppet version. I don't know why it's taking so long to load. 2014, yay! All right, so Puppet Module Search OS X. Let's say that. So without the M Puppet business, that's just for me. Type in Puppet Module Search OS X. This is a command line interface to the website forge.puppetlabs.com, which is still sort of in its infancy, but is growing steadily. And here are two. 
things there. I have tagged my code as PSU Mac admins. PSU Mac. Apparently I just did PSU Mac. I don't even know what I tagged my module with. But if I search for PSU Mac, I get back the code examples that you've been seeing today. So you can search modules. You can install modules. Let's say I wanted to install R Coleman dash PSU underscore Mac admins, or if you wanted to install one of those other ones, wherever you like. If you did search Apache, you can install Apache one. But whatever's under the name column there, you can install modules. And yeah, my 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 Mac is not designed for hosting modules, so yours will work. Mine will not. But it'll install it in there. Another cool thing about it, you can do puppet module list. And it will list the modules that you have. Again, my system is not really uh, set up for this. And you can do dash dash tree onto the list to get a nice tree view. So it's just cool for playing around with uh, Forge modules. Is uh, the puppet lab slash learning, does that cover how to create your own modules and stuff like that? Yeah, in fact, there is. The question was, uh, is there a guide for creating your own modules? It's not in the slash learning, but if you go up a level, docs.puppetlabs.com, there is a section here. There's modules and classes, but then there is actually a section directly on uh, modules fundamentals, installing modules from the forge, and one of the module ones in here will actually talk about writing your own module and submitting it to the forge. It's probably further down the page and advanced. Yeah, there it is, publishing modules on the Puppet Forge. So if you guys do get into Puppet and you write code, at the very least, consume from the Puppet Forge, use stuff. Some of the stuff is working right out of the box. Some of the stuff might need a little bit of polish. At the very least, you can see examples of how other people have tackled problems. Let's see, it's almost four. So let me give you a quick walkthrough of, of M Collective again, and then We'll call it a day. So there's MCO ping again. So M Collective, just as a sum up, it is a Java-based ActiveMQ server which runs on the Puppet Master, which has a message queue that all your clients subscribe to. The server drops messages into that queue. All the clients instantaneously pick up that message, process it, and then do whatever action if necessary. So this is me pinging all my machines. I can do ping, or sorry, MCO inventory. If I wanted to just look at what an individual machine is up to. Here is 66. There's all of its fact data, plus other data about mCollective. You can get this back in JSON. You can get it back in YAML. You can you know, structure data formats that you can post-process with. You can string commands together, feed this data to other commands. mCollective is, if you thought Puppet was complicated, mCollective is crazy. But there's some pretty simple things you can do with it. So here's another one, MCO find. I'm just going to return uh, certificate names. But this host filters bit at the bottom is awesome. This is really the core of mCollective's power, being able to leverage the fact data you have, the declared classes with this with class, the puppet or the mCollective agents. And there's also an mCollective identity idea. But that fact in class is awesome. So with fact kernel equals Linux, let's say. I'm going to get back, should be getting back one machine. Maybe no machines. Kernel equals Linux. There it is. Sorry, I guess it's case sensitive. So there is two machines that are Linux machines. Obviously, if I change this to Darwin, I'd get all of your machines, right? Everybody in this room. So let's take a look at what else M Collective can do. MCO help. I've got another couple of agents. I've got PuppetD. We used ping. I can install and uninstall packages. Inventory you just saw. Find you just saw. You can get facts, report on usage for specific facts. There's also service at the bottom. Let's look at facts. Facts. I forget how to get help for it. I think it's just dash dash help. All right, so report on usage for a specific fact. So MCO facts with, actually I forget how to use this, 
stand by. For, for with fat clinics uptime. Okay, so I think I'm filtering. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. So MCO facts, I'm saying for my machines that match kernel Linux, I want uptime. And I'll get uptime. You can do ex comparison expressions in here. Give me all the machines that have been up for more than 300 days. Give them a pat on the back. I don't know. Something like that. So any of those facts that you get, again, let me switch back. Factor dash P. Any custom facts you write, any facts you see in here. Here's uptime seconds, SSH keys, operating system. There's a whole bunch of service. So let's take this one, SP 64-bit kernel and K texts. So kernel equals Darwin. And I care about this 64-bit kernel extensions. Yes, 29 times. So if you want to discover what of, which of your Lion machines are running in 32-bit mode right now versus 64-bit, that would tell you. Right? And if you did dash dash help again, you'd see that there's a myriad of ways of getting information back and limiting it and so on and so forth. Let's do that one more time with, you know, you could do operating system release and so forth, yeah. You, you get the idea. Is uh, M collective required to run Puppet? Uh, no. no. And Puppet is not required. It's required to run Puppet considering it wants to collect facts about the system before it runs. Exactly. So factor is that underlying piece. You can run M collective with factor, Puppet with factor. You don't need these two pieces okay. to be mutually exclusive. Yeah, so no, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that here. Um, yeah, so here is on slash learning. If you guys are interested in getting an introduction to setting up your own master and agent, part two there, preparing an agent VM, basic agent master, that'll get you started with creating these things. It'll talk a little bit about certificate relationships. SSL is a bit hard, so expect you know, a little bit of issue there, but it's not that hard. Right? And we, we have this puppet cert command for signing and listing certificates. It turns out to be more manual labor than complexity. Right? You need that initial step to sign everybody and get them all happy into the infrastructure. And you know, feel, for, feel free to contact me, and I can follow up with you out of band on that. Uh, I want to show you the getting help slide. Take these down. In fact, <coughs> Let's add an entry here. Feel free to tweet me. Or sacrilegious. Yeah, if you, if you want to complain, you just talk to me. Because I, I don't have plenty of complaining. I'll, I'll let you know if it's redundant. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> I won't take up any more of your guys' time. I think that's hopefully been useful, at least, at the very least, exposed you to the complexities and what it's capable of doing once you go over that gap of their complexities. M Collective is freaking awesome. And here's another thing I would suggest. The learning VM happens to use Puppet Enterprise, but um, yeah, so actually I just suggest you going through the learning VM and doing that, but the, the core point I was gonna make is that Puppet Enterprise, Enterprise is free up to 10 nodes. And it comes prepackaged and pre-configured with Puppet, M Collective, Factor, all this crap. So if you just want to get it in your infrastructure and use the product and see whether it makes sense for you, do that, right? Just use 10 nodes for free. If you want to go open source from that point forward, you can reverse engineer what we've done on the enterprise side. You can just do your own open source employment, whatever. That's, you know, we're not going to discriminate against you. The idea is enterprise makes it a lot easier for you to get up and running, use the product, and make your, an informed decision on whether it meets your needs. Sir? I believe you said the uh, enterprise version comes prepackaged with Apache. Yes, it uh, configures the master to scale with Apache and Mod Passenger. Is it possible to pull that out and run Nginx instead in the enterprise version? Uh, it won't be supported in the enterprise version. You can do it in open source. And I will bet all my monies that Nginx will be the server we use in a future version of Puppet Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. 
yeah, so it's, it's a nice, easy way to get going. Um, feel free to stick around and ask questions of me. Otherwise, you know. For a uh, usage case, with this being state-based, would, um, to say, switch between a software update server, whether you're on network or off, camp or off network, would this be a good use for that? Or would there be, say, something else that might be a better solution for that? You could do that, right? I think mean, it's like a good use case example. Yeah, I would say that, that running Puppet Manifest locally on a laptop uh, for things that must change when network state is in flux is a really good idea. I would always have Puppet Apply running in cron against a very particular manifest that does things like set the software update server based on IP, right? If I'm in this range, if I'm in this DNS, whatever custom fact you want to use. The same thing for setting up my DNS, for setting up my VPN. All these things you can do by applying Puppet locally. You don't like that? I don't, I don't want to keep giving you stink eye. I'm sorry, really. It's, me, is bad. But, like, uh, Cranky is a daemon that's, you know, a first class citizen on mm -hmm. the system. Even though it doesn't have, it, it only has, it no longer really has the development team it had, considering they now work for Public Labs and uh, they're in DC, you know, making Django software. But, uh, it, it, that's a better it's solution for that. Deployments and Tegu. And Google wrote it, yeah, Nigel. He yeah. collaborated on it right. while he was still at Google, sure. So, like, like that's the thing, like, having Puppet apply on a, a launchd.org contract, or a uh, <laughs> like, constantly running on the system might be resource intensive when... Yeah. Yeah, so I, so I, I guess I'm looking at it... Yeah, and in fact, there's Gary Larissa wrote a resource type for managing uh, CrankD that you can use. The, yeah. The, the other piece that I like having Puppet running for is the reporting bit. So that as soon as Puppet checks into the master, I get all the data about what occurred on that system over time. Right? Crank D won't get you that, but you can. Yes? Uh, is a fair, I'm saying it's a fair alternative. Puppet is my hammer. I'm going to hit it with, hit everything with it. Oh, and because people ask you pretty often, so if you go to puppetlabs.com slash puppet slash how to buy, there's not only 30% discount for education, it's also for non-for-profits. Oh, cool. All right. So that's if, you're, if you would like Pump It Enterprise and have $10,000 for 100 computers. <laughs> so we'll work with you on price. <laughs> for you, it's higher. Oh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> So one last question for me: Do you do you consider um, Puppet a, a fair replacement for something like CF Engine on Linux? Yes. Um, so as far as direct competitors, right? Like I can say, Puppet's a good use case for this, or that, or the other. Puppet is in the exact same space as CF Engine, mm -hmm. Chef, Blade Logic, things like that. Of course, I'm saying Puppet's better, but feel free to use both and make make a decision. CF Engine just now and CF Engine three with their promise theory gets you in the same field, the same ballpark as our declarative state-based nature, I would say our execution is better. For one thing, we can do simulation. They can't do right. simulation. Yeah, Chef, as well. Chef is working on simulation, and good for them. It's, it's a really good thing to have. They're not quite there yet. Yeah, it's C-based. Yeah, so like resource-wise, the people that are very concerned about uh, like you could run CF Engine with Puppet. Like it's not like you can't. Like a, like a M Collective can work with Chef, right? Yep. Uh, and uh, there's other dashboards or functionality right. that can work with the other tools that uh, Puppet has contributed to as part of the yeah. open source community. So. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, whatever product you guys use. Use configuration management. Treat your systems as this living creature that you need to maintain with certainty, with state. You need to do that. I think Puppet's a really good product, and it is pretty easy to use once you're outside of this two-hour two, uh, flash bomb of a demo. But do something like this. It will make your lives easier. You will get to a point where you are able to go to the, the pub by 4 o'clock and enjoy your evenings. When users break their systems, the, the software will correct it. That is the goal, right? You guys should spend more time designing services that kick ass and less time fixing the service that you've already built. OK? So thank you all for coming to this. I'll be around for questions. And feel free to hit me on Twitter or send me Ryan at PuppetLabs.com if you prefer email. I'm happy to follow up with you guys and, and get you to a happy place. So thanks a lot.